What's going on guys? My name is Josh Setledge. I am the BJJ Strength Coach and I'm here to talk to you guys today about a question that I got from Instagram in regards to weight cutting. I got this question from Colt underscore O'Brien and his question is best protocol to drop weight 15 pounds for a tournament one month out. Colt, thank you so much for submitting your question. This is something that I'm very familiar with being a wrestling coach, being a strength and conditioning coach for wrestlers and jiu-jitsu athletes. This is something we work with every day or every time that we uh, enter a competition. So you're 15 pounds overweight about a month out. That's really not that bad. I'm assuming you're in decent shape and that you're planning to do some little bit of water manipulation, a little bit of a water cut. If you were... Um, on the puffier side of things, if you were, as Mark Smelly Bell would say, hashtag so fat. If you were, you know, if you're fat, then maybe try to decrease your calories, put yourself in a caloric deficit so you could lose 15 pounds of fat tissue instead of just manipulating water to kind of crash diet. And, and you, you really don't want to mess with that. But assuming that you're in relatively good shape, and you want to cut down to the next lowest weight class say you walk around at 183 you want to make it to the 160 pound weight class so you have you know 13 to 15 pounds that you want to cut to compete this would be my recommendation for you you're one month out which is great 15 pounds over not a big deal 14 days out you need to be 10 pounds overweight 14 days out now you're going what you're going to do is you're going to start increasing your physical activity a little bit but you're not going to decrease your calories a whole lot you still need plenty of calories to uh, you know fuel yourself for your training you don't want to skip meals before training you don't want to skip meals after training but you do want to increase your physical activity a little bit now you can do that in a variety of ways that could look like getting into class or practice early to work on some extra drills do some extra rounds extra live rounds or extra positional rounds at the end of class that can look like taking some more 10 minute walks which is pretty effective and actually great for your recovery and then it could also look like um, just adding in a little bit of GPP work during your strength and conditioning training so that could be spending more time on the sled maybe doing a, a few rowing intervals uh, towards the end of your training so that you are you're just increasing your physical activity a little bit that's going to be when you're two weeks out when you're seven days out, you need to be five pounds overweight. Now, you know, make sure you're staying hydrated, of course. Make sure your nutrition is on point, of course. Make sure you're still training hard, of course. Uh, make sure that you're recovering and uh, you're getting enough sleep, all that good stuff. All that stuff that's very important to training in general stays the same. And when you're a week out, we need to be five pounds over. When it comes to, uh, you, so you're gonna just repeat what you did for the last week, repeat that same approach for this week, and by the, by the, I'm assuming you're competing on a Saturday. The Friday before or 24 hours out, you need to wake up and at least, or at the most I should say, at the most be three pounds overweight when you wake up. Now what you'll do is you'll go to practice, you'll go to class, and you're gonna lose those three pounds in that practice. Now for most wrestlers, for most jiu-jitsu athletes, three pounds in a practice is pretty easy. You could sweat out uh, three pounds pretty quick. Maybe put on an extra layer or two, but you should be good to go. Now, this last practice before the tournament, it's important that we don't overdo it. We don't uh, completely blow ourselves out. So we're only working, we're only drilling at about 50 to 70%. And as soon as we lose those three pounds and we're right on weight, call it. Cool down, go home, rest, eat up, relax, rehydrate, all that good stuff. After that evening, Try to take a few more 10 minute walks. Try to um, you know, still keep your physical activity up just a little bit, but nothing too crazy the night before. Go to bed. You're probably gonna float one to two pounds overnight, which means that you'll lose one to two pounds in your sleep. When you wake up, take a piss, take a crap, check your weight. You should be one pound over, maybe two pounds over. And if you're one to two pounds over, don't sweat it. You're good. It, I mean, do sweat it. You are gonna sweat it out but don't uh, freak out about it, you're totally fine. As soon as you get to the venue, make sure you get there early with plenty of time, put on, you know, put some layers on, uh, shadow drill, you know, drill some takedowns with the partner, work some guard passes with the partner and, and work up that sweat again, and you'll be able to sweat out one to two pounds easily within 30 to 45 minutes. You weigh in and you're all set, you make weight and you're good to go, you're ready to have a good day of competition. 
Now, here's the most important part. I just talked about getting down into weight. Getting down to weight doesn't mean crap if you don't rehydrate properly. You're actually doing more harm than good if you miss the most important part, which is the rehydration process. This is a technique that I use with my wrestlers. This is a technique that I got from Stan Efferding. As soon as you step off the scale, like you should have it with you when you go to weigh in. Like set it down next to the scale, step on. As soon as you step off, this is what I need you to do. You're gonna take two water bottles, this two standard, I think they're like 16 ounce or 16 fluid ounce water bottles. You're gonna fill half of it with water, half of it with orange juice. And you're gonna drop a gram of table salt in that water bottle. Shake it up, have two of those waiting for you as soon as you're done with weigh-ins. The minute you step off the scale, you're gonna slam one right away. The next one, you're gonna sit slowly, then you're just gonna take a walk around the venue or around the building, wherever. You're just gonna start walking and walk and comfortably continue drinking and sipping on that second one. You're gonna keep walking until you've drank in both bottles. Now, here's the thing with the contents in this bottle. When, you're, when it's time to rehydrate, the most important thing that you need to get in or the most important ingredients that you need to get, get in are, of course, water, but also some form of quick, di uh, quickly digestible carbohydrates like fructose or orange juice. It's pretty easy, pretty cheap, as well as sodium. You definitely need sodium in there. So you'll slam those two bottles, keep walking. As soon as you finish those, then you can go back in and have your, you know, your first meal. That could look something, uh, something like eggs and some rice, eggs and some potatoes. My dad, when I was wrestling, he would always hook me up and make these bomb breakfast burritos. Now, I, was, I don't eat tortillas regularly now, so I wouldn't want to change things up from my standard diet now and reintroduce tortillas. Eat stuff that you're already used to, but keep things light, keep things that you can digest quickly. You know, digest those, go for a 10 minute walk again. You wanna make sure that you're digesting those food, uh, those food items quickly and that your body is, you know, shuttling those nutrients into your muscles, replenishing your muscle glycogen, rehydrating all your tissues, all that good stuff. And then you're ready to warm up, take a nice long warm up. You don't, you never want your first match to be your first match wrestle a full match or a uh, a one 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 match or one minute interval match with a partner maybe do two of those you really want to get in six minutes of hard wrestling about an hour before you actually step onto the mat to compete for real and that would be my that would be my advice for you colt i hope that answers your question if you guys have other questions about whether it's weight cutting nutrition for wrestling and jujitsu workouts to get strong best tips to get strong and enhance your performance on the mat for wrestling and jiu-jitsu, just comment them below this video or, or shoot me a DM on Instagram at Joshua Setledge and I'll be more than happy to help you out. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.